Runaway Cyclone by Jagdish Chandra Bose Translated by Bodhisattva Chattopadhyay Part 1 A Scientific Mystery A few years ago, a supernatural event was observed which rocked the scientific communities of America and Europe. A number of articles were published in various scientific journals to explain the phenomenon, but till now, no explanation of the event has been found satisfactory. On 28th September, the leading English daily of Calcutta published the following news received from Shimla. Shimla Meteorological Office, 27th September. A cyclone in the Bay of Bengal is imminent. On 29th September, the aforementioned daily published the following news. Meteorological Office, Alipur. A tremendous cyclone is about to strike Bengal in two days. A danger signal has been put up on Diamond Harbour. On the 30th, the news was extremely frightening. The barometer fell two inches in the last half hour. By 10 o'clock tomorrow, Calcutta will face the worst and most dangerous cyclone in years. No one slept that night in Calcutta. On 1st October, the sky remained cloudy and a few drops of rain fell during the day. It remained dark throughout the day, but about 4 in the evening, the sky suddenly became clear without a trace of the cyclone. The next day, the meteorological department sent the following news to the newspaper office. The cyclone that was to strike Calcutta has left the Bay of Bengal and has probably gone off in another direction in the Indian Ocean. However, despite the attempts of many scientists to follow the trail of the cyclone, no one was able to discover the cyclone's new direction. The leading English daily published the following news. Now it is certain that scientific knowledge is completely false. Another daily published the following. If science is false, then why should the taxpayers be burdened by the totally unreliable meteorological department? Various other dailies joined as chorus. Let it go. Scrap it. The government was in a fix. A few days ago, new equipment worth over 1 lakh rupee had been purchased for the meteorological department. Now those items would not even sell for the price of broken glass bottles. Besides, where would one transfer the chief officer of the meteorological department? In dire straits, the government appealed to the Calcutta Medical College. We wish to appoint a new chair at the medical college. Lectures would be delivered on the following topic on the effect of variation of barometric pressure on the human system. The principal of the medical college wrote back, A wonderful suggestion. A decrease in air pressure enhances blood circulation in the human body. This would undoubtedly help rejuvenate the body. However, the citizens of Calcutta are under the following pressures at the moment. First, air. Pressure per square inch. 15 pounds. Second, malaria. Pressure per square inch, 20 pounds. Third, patented medicines. Pressure per square inch, 30 pounds. Fourth, university. Pressure per square inch, 50 pounds. Fifth, income tax. Pressure per square inch, 80 pounds. Sixth, municipal tax. Pressure per square inch, 1 ton. The relief of a few inches of air pressure would be like a handful of twigs on an already heavy load. Thus, starting this chair in Calcutta might not have particularly beneficial or noticeable effects on the residents of the city. In the hills of Shimla, the air pressure as well as other pressures is comparatively much less. Hence, it would be better if the said chair was appointed at Shimla because its effects would be more noticeable there. The government remained silent on the issue after this. The meteorological department managed to survive 
this particular crisis. The issue of the cyclone, however, remained unsolved. A scientist published an article in Nature once. His theory was that the cyclone was dispersed by the gravitational pull of an invisible comet. These are all mere guesses. Even now, the issue raises cyclony debates in the scientific community. At the British Association Convention at Oxford, a German professor presented an erudite paper on the, quote, runaway cyclone phenomenon, which astounded his peers. According to the professor, a cyclone is merely a form of the atmosphere. Let us first examine how the atmosphere came into being. When the earth was simply molten metallic matter, which had come out of the sun, it did not have an atmosphere. How oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen came together out of this molten matter is still one of the mysteries of creation. Even more mysterious and fascinating is the evolution of life. Let us assume that the atmosphere somehow came into being. What is an even greater problem is how this atmosphere does not dissolve and vanish into space. This is because of Earth's gravitational pull. Gravity works according to relative mass. That which is heavier is subject to more gravitational force and is therefore relatively tied to its own position on the Earth. The lighter object is still less influenced by gravity and is therefore relatively free. This is why when we mix oil and water, the lighter oil generally floats to the surface. Hydrogen being lighter tries to escape the Earth's atmosphere, however, it is not completely free of the gravitational pull. However, we doubt if the truth of relative mass is applicable to areas other than physics. For instance, in the country called India, the men are heavier and relatively free. The women, who are relatively light, are tied to the domestic space. In any case, only matter remains attached to the earth by virtue of its gravity. After the death of the matter, it is free from earth. When man gives up his ghost, the force of gravity no longer restricts his movement. Some people say that even in death, man is not free of earth, because even ghosts have to move under the commands of the Theosophical Society. In the case of matter, however, it is incorrect to say that it attains five states or panchatva, because we see only three. When bombarded with radium, matter breaks down into three states, alpha, beta and gamma. Thus, when matter is broken down, the non-matter escapes into an open space. While living, however, it is impossible to escape the force of gravity. While the professor did provide a scientific explanation of why matter does not escape into space, he failed to point out why the cyclone suddenly disappeared in the Bay of Bengal. The truth of the matter is known to only one person in this world, me. In the next part, I will give you a detailed explanation of the phenomenon. Part 2 I fell extremely ill some years ago. I was in bed for almost a month. The doctor said that a sea journey was absolutely necessary. Without it, I would not survive another spell of this illness. So I decided to journey to Ceylon. The illness had taken its toll on my once abundant hair. One day, my eight-year-old daughter came to me and asked, Daddy, what is an island? Before I could answer, she took hold of the few locks of hair left on my otherwise smooth head surface and said, Here are the islands. After a while, she said, I have put a bottle of Kuntal Keshari in your bag. Use it every day during your voyage. Otherwise, in the salty sea water, even these few islands would vanish. The story of how Kuntal Keshari was invented is very interesting. A British sahib came to India with his circus troupe. The star attraction of the circus was a lion 
with a huge and lustrous black mane. By a stroke of misfortune, the lion caused his thick hair during the voyage to India because of a microbial disease. When the ship landed, one could not see much difference between the lion and a hairless street dog. The helpless circus manager prostrated himself before a sannyasi, touched his feet and with folded hands asked for a solution. A Christian and an Englishman at that? The sannyasi was impressed with the man's devotion and as blessing gave him a bottle of oil whose formulae had come to the sannyasi in a dream. This is the same oil which later became famous as Kuntal Kishri. By applying this oil, the lion got its mane back within a week. For all bald men and their partners, this oil holds a special fascination. This news was published for the public good in all the newspapers of the country. The leading monthly magazine even featured the news on its cover. On 20th September, I set sail on the ship Chosan. The first two days were uneventful and pleasant. On the first, however, the sea assumed a strange and hostile form and the sea breeze stopped completely. Even the surface of the sea remained taut. We were all struck by the sad look on the captain's face. He told us that very soon an extremely violent cyclone would crash upon us. Being far from the coast, our future was now in God's hands. Soon thereafter, the sky became overcast with thick black clouds. It became dark almost instantly, and some strong winds from afar came and struck our ship several times. I have only a faint idea of what happened thereafter. All of a sudden, it was as if the angry giants of yore had returned and come to destroy the earth. The sounds of the cyclone winds mixed with the sounds of the angry sea and made the music of destruction all around us. Waves upon waves hit our boat and rocked it from all sides. A huge wave took away our mast and lifeboat with it. Our last day was upon us. One remembers one's loved ones when his final moments are near. I remembered my loved ones and strangely, even my daughter's joke about my sparse hair. Daddy, I have put a bottle of Kuntal Keshari in your bag. Suddenly I remembered what I had read recently in a scientific journal about the effects of oil on water waves. I remembered that oil calms the surface of moving water. I took out my bottle of Kuntal Keshari that very moment from my bag and with great difficulty climbed up to the deck. I saw a gigantic mountain-like wave that was coming to strike us down. I abandoned all hope opened the cap of the Kuntal Kesari bottle and threw it at the sea. Like magic, the sea became calm and the wonderful cooling oil even calmed the entire atmosphere. The sun came up in a second. Thus, we were spared from a certain death and it is for this reason the cyclone never reached Calcutta. How many thousands were saved from an untimely death simply by this bottle of hair oil? Who can say?